Welcome back to the Fast Life Podcast. Hope you guys had a great weekend. We have a great show for you guys today with Thrash and Supply. Now, Lance is the actual owner and the uh, and the mastermind behind Thrashing, but you guys also know that uh, Two Lane Life is a part of that Thrashing family. So uh, we had all the guys in on this podcast, and uh, we had a great time. And you know, me and and Big Lance and Galen and and Josh, we've had a lot of miles together and uh, had a lot of good times. And you know what what Thrashing's been doing this last year is pretty awesome. I'm glad we uh, got to have this on the podcast so you guys can hear about it. So if you guys haven't heard about simpson motorcycle helmets what kind of rock have you been sleeping under they got the baddest helmets in the game sleekest designs they're fucking awesome you need to check them out simpson motorcycle helmets.com as well as on instagram at simpson motorcycle helmets i'd also like to welcome sns performance to our podcast you guys know sns has everything you need to crank out power from your motorcycle's engine from exhaust systems to air cleaners and everything in between Check them out at sscycle.com and on the gram at sscycle. You can also check out their Performance Times podcast. It's on all the uh, podcast platforms, I believe, under SNS Performance Times. Check it out. Lex and Moto has the intercom system for you, the all-new G16. It's a group rider's long-awaited answer to an affordable intercom system. It has a 16-rider comm system, Bluetooth 5.0, and, it, and music sharing. It'll keep your group connected while traveling together. This is another great product from the team at Lexan geared at making motorcycle rides and travel more enjoyable. Check it out at lexan-moto.com where you can apply the Fast Life offer code, which will give you 15%. And as always, you can rest assured that Lexan backs up all their products with the best customer service in the industry. Thunder Max has your EFI equipped Harley Davidson covered with their high quality auto tuning ECMs. I've been running Thunder Max on all my fuel injected bikes since 2015 and I've laid down thousands of hard, wet, nasty miles while their ECMs kept me running smooth. I also run their oil cooler fan which is available for the M8 Touring models which took my 131 motor from operating temperatures in the high 300s to the low 300s. It's, it's a drastic difference in my opinion. You can check out these products at shoptmax.com and use offer code FASTLIFE for 10% off and follow these guys on Instagram at Thundermax EFI. My guys at Electric Lighting Co. has your bike covered from headlight to tail light with a ton of LED lighting options for many different Harley Davidson models. All lighting is backed by great warranties and plug and play options, so you can't go wrong with making the switch or stepping up to Electric Lighting Co. NAMS Custom Cycle Products since 1999 has been offering American made wiring products for all things V Twin. And Badlands for over 30 years has been offering the most reliable and dependable, light, dependable lighting modules in the USA backed by a lifetime warranty. Find out more about these great companies at namscustomcycleproducts.com and you can drop the FL2021 offer code which gives you free shipping on orders over 100 bucks. Ooh. Like I said in the intro, this, uh, this podcast is with Thrash and Supply. And uh, if you didn't know, he... Lance was the rider behind the uh, the new adventure bike, the um, Pan America, the release. Uh, he got a lot of seat time in that, and uh, we get to talk about that and many other things. So before I start rambling on too much longer, let's just get into this episode. Here's the Thrashing Supply Co. Family. Here we go. Hey, guys. You ready to let the dogs out? Fast life. Uh, sounds like a picture being taken. <laughs> yeah, it's as loud as it sounds. <laughs> All right, that's you. When we sit in Texas with them, usually his podcasts are like two or three hours. Yeah, well, th- that's because of alcohol. That's because of alcohol. How'd that podcast go? It, great. You know what I mean? The video version, our, our video stuff isn't as strong as our audio. You know what I mean? They're two different. Uh, they're two different. Like. Uh, like Bruce. counted views yeah. and, and listens, you know what I'm saying? So it, um, yeah, I mean, it was great. Like I said, everybody loved it. I mean, you guys are like the YouTube kings right now with this shit. So, you know, everybody wanted to see you guys talk. You know, you, you guys are like super famous now. It's like a whole uh, bunch of famous motherfuckers in this room right now trying to get on y'all's level. Mm-mm. Oh, you're already recording. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> shit. I looked over at your computer. I saw a little fucking you saw the red audio stuff going and the audio going. Hell yeah. YouTube Kings. 
Yep. Where's the Whoa. where's like the intro to your do you pre record that and drop it in? Yeah, I got the intro like at I got the little song sound bite that we use to, to and separate. What's it sound like? It's uh, it, we wanted it to sound like a porno. But I want you to sound it out. I can't do that. I, I wanted you to <laughs> You wanted to make it sound I was like trying, a porno. I was trying to get him to give me a little reenactment. <laughs> well we use uh, the uh, uh, Is that how it goes? Almost, but we use the um, what was it? You know a uh, uh, hangover when he goes, uh, hey, you guys ready to let the dogs out from that part when they're going gotcha. up the uh, elevator or some yeah. shit? Or when he walks out the room with the satchel or some shit like that? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but no, we just, we were in the room trying to come up with something for a thing, and it's been the exact same thing we've used since day one, so it's like, just stick with it. How Nostalgic. Many, how long have you been doing this? Three years in January, and we're, technically this will be 196 or seven as far as episodes nice and then we got about 15 episodes that are like not on they're only on like our paywall place <laughs> if you gotcha. will <laughs> yeah so well thank you guys for doing this we're in the uh thrash and uh looks like the uh cust or the break lounge for uh, yeah kind of meeting room break lounge we're surrounded by everybody's offices and everybody's got their doors open listening to us right now yeah <laughs> so they can chime in right yeah, they could yeah right. we could I mean, we, we could reel anybody in right in. now yeah, yeah. Yo. special forces yeah but yeah so no I'm, I'm glad thank you guys for doing this i know it's complicated in the in the work week you got millions of shit going millions of things going on and you know i'm just riding my bike across country trying to absorb as much content as we can for this uh show but yeah man you guys have been busy that's that's really what this is about you guys have been doing so much especially for a year when the rest of the world was uh you know taking a pause if you will you guys just kept doing shit so. right non-stop well, yeah well I, even like i was saying about my dad um it's just wild that that the three of them have been able to drop a vlog every, every week. week i'm like you know when they started this over a year ago and and we were all kind of just like talking about it even just in this room or whatever like oh you guys start a vlog like what you guys do is insane like where you guys mm -hmm. ride um and I'm like, you're already doing it out of your own pocket. You're already riding all these states. And I was like, why don't you start filming it and sharing it? Like, yeah. people will be stoked on this. Because they'd come back and show me, like, iPhone videos. Mm -hmm. And be like, oh, you should have seen, like, this town we went through. Or yeah. you should have seen this weather we got went through. Like, And then I was, you know, obviously all of us together were just like, oh, you should start sharing it. I am personally mind blown how far they've taken it. I think, you know, Josh coming into the team for them yep. um, brought them to a whole nother level. But again, again, like the, you know, my father, Lance and Galen, they're, they're both so committed, um, yeah. <laughs> more committed than I honestly, than I honestly thought. Um, and then Josh is just as committed, the three of them together and like all the places they're going, they don't, they, they literally will plan a trip out like, I don't know, let's just say a month ahead. Mm -hmm. And then it could be pouring rain that Thursday that they're going to leave and they still leave. Yeah, exactly. It's not like, Which it's did. commitment. Yeah. So did you call us? Your fathers? I said my father, Lance, and Galen. Oh, I thought because <laughs> yeah. I kind of I felt yeah. good about that. You know, there's a, I'm yeah, not gonna lie. There's a couple. Change. There's a couple things that I'll you know listen to you on. Yeah, yeah. You know. So. <laughs> but at the same time, mm -hmm. the narrative for thrashing. I mean, what a year they've had. Exactly. And that's like it's just a, in a year like you're saying. But yeah. you know, motorcycles are a way for people to get out and ride and enjoy. Mm -hmm. in a year where it's been shut down and so what a year you guys yeah. have had no i mean it's definitely been good i i personally all i've ever known is the motorcycle industry mm -hmm. since i was a, you know before i was even a teenager but financially like making a living all i've ever known is motorcycles yeah um, and i started my career and 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 made a living through the you know housing crisis in 2008 like yeah. i was 18 years old i was riding dirt bikes for a living and traveling the world. And I, you know, obviously I saw a lot of unfortunate things happen with friends losing houses and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. And um, I remember like some of the riders being like, oh man, five years ago we were making way more money. But during that time to me, it was like, I'm making enough to live. So I'm yeah. stoked, you know, like, right. and, I, and I think the same thing goes on. Obviously there's some people with very unfortunate things going on right now mm -hmm. out of their you know, re, like out of their hands, like they couldn't do anything different, whether it's the government shutting them down from being open um, and, or just the trickle effect of that causing their business not yeah. to do well. But again, 
a lot of us motorcycle riders, you know, we want to freaking ride. Yeah. And, uh, and it's a good thing that we're, uh, all like-minded and, and hitting the road. Well, most of the industry took a big, uh, it's almost like it got a stimulus upbringing with everybody getting f- like checks. <laughs> it pretty much turned into parts and bars and risers and, and uh, new rotors and, you know, helmets for everybody in the, uh, as the enthusiast side of it, you know what I'm saying? So, you know, a lot of brands, and I'm sure you guys could probably say yours as well. It's just, it, it was like a year of growth in, yeah. in, in the parts selling business and stuff like that. And um, you guys still managed to do, you know, ride to Sturgis, uh, multiple other rides that you guys did locally around here just to get away. And that's one thing I've always liked about not just the thrashing brand, but, you know, now that the uh, offspring of the fathers, I guess yeah. you'd say. <laughs> the father's brand. <laughs> Is that those guys, you know, have done the same thing, too, and been able to drop a vlog a week and, you know, came out to Texas and rode with us. And, you know, that's, that's the kind of, in my opinion, that when you think about a motorcycle brand, that's what you want to see. You don't want to see like you getting off work and going and jumping your speedboat for the weekend. Yeah. And uh, that says thrashing, but you'd never ride a bike. You know yeah. what I'm saying? So that's one of the things that I've always appreciated about what you guys do. So, yeah, definitely. Well, that honestly, that was the biggest thing that. Do you have a speedboat? I wish I had a speedboat. No, actually, <laughs> he has, he has I grew something up. Something else. A little speedier. Than yeah. The boat. I had. I had my dad growing up my whole life was always like, the best boat to own is your buddies. Yeah. <laughs> right. So right. boats haven't always, <laughs> boats haven't always been in my, uh, in That's my vision of what advice. to earn. Right. But, yeah. um, you know, I've always said since the beginning of the brand and, and even it goes back to my career in riding. Um, if you want to make it in the motorcycle industry, you got to be a rider. Mm-hmm. And so, you know, when I, when I rode for a living, if you wanted to be better and you wanted to make it, you had to ride more, Yeah. you know? And, same goes for this brand. It's like, uh, I can't, we as a team can't develop products if we're not out putting more miles than the average person on. Yeah. You know, so there's not a single part or piece of apparel that leaves this this facility, whether it's gloves or whether it's foot pegs or handlebars or risers or saddlebags or anything that we develop here. Mm-hmm. There's not a single thing that somebody has is going to put more miles than us on it. Yeah. Um, and so when we get phone calls with feedback, we've either already experienced it or, um, you know, or they had a fluke or they, or they're just as stoked as we are, yeah. you know? So, um, that's the biggest thing that we're proud of. And, and that's, that's how you, you know, grow a brand because we have the best research and development. And that's yeah. kind of interesting when you say that, because when we started two lane life and we're riding around everywhere we'd go, people would ask us, Hey Galen, what did you think about your, your floorboards or yeah. your seat or whatever we were wearing? Mm-hmm. They were at, we started to get questions from around the world. So we're like, we have like this, uh, arena. Yeah. And like I know? said, with you guys, which I've said many times in the, in the podcast that we've done, it's like, you guys are like. I think that we all vicariously younger guys are just hoping that we're as cool as you guys when we get older. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, I hope that I don't look like some, you know, I, don't, <laughs> I don't want to say all the names, but you know, like the hell yeah brother kind of guys that, <laughs> that aren't really, Costume you know, wears. <laughs> I mean, they ride too. And that's not, it's nothing to say about that, but just like not leathered up, like the, the way you guys layer, it's kind of more ideal. So we don't look like this stereotypical biker from right. uh, you know history or whatever you know what i'm saying like it's right. just a new look it's a fresh look and uh a lot of people are always like you know performance bikes isn't about how it looks i was like i think everything's about how shit looks you know what i mean <laughs> yeah, it just like, doesn't sound as like, cool to say it's like when you go golfing if you look good you feel good and you yeah. probably <laughs> swing like shit when you're out there yeah. <laughs> so we're the benefactor of thrash and so that's why we're so cool you know we get yeah. the atlas jacket we're not in, and nothing wrong with leathers, but yeah. he won't let us wear leather. No, I, I like leather. <laughs> leather has its purpose, but there's there's definitely you know fringe and stuff like that that's definitely out of style. You know, um, it's like you take away the leather, but then you bring the eagles back, and you, you still got that ride to live kind of vibe, yeah. but with like newer shit. And that's that's something I love, and you know uh, personally because I always put like an old ride to live gas cap on my bikes. Yeah. So you got all this nice shit, and then you just got this gas cap from the '80s. Yeah. It's got a little patina on it. Yeah. And uh, the reminder. Yes. Yeah, Cause I mean, I identify with that shit, but yeah. I just, it just doesn't have the look, you know right. what I'm saying? So it's like, I, I get to have it and I get to feel it, but it's not, I'm not like parading it down the street. You know what I mean? Right. Who knows? Who knows? 10, 20 years from now, <clears throat> everyone will be rocking that shit. Yeah. Fucking with, with fringe and leather. Right. And, and everything cycles, right? Live the yeah. ride. And it's just going to, yeah. and a different the Next cut. thing you know, you yeah. guys will be on big wheel baggers. 
Air ride, suspension, <laughs> scraping down the road. Shout out. Thrashing will be coming people. out with a new jacket with fringe on it. Yep. Say that again. <laughs> it happens. Uh, we want to do a special shout out to Big Wheel Cody B. Yeah, yeah. Cody B. <laughs> he still, like I said, that's what I love about him. And, you know, we've, we, I guess we all ran into each other in Sturgis this last year. And uh, it was like the stare down from my crew and y'all's crew because we got a riding crew too. <laughs> but you know, it ended in a, in hugs. It yeah, worked. it worked. <laughs> but uh, I think that like you know, because we've always had our group of riders, and we've been doing this cross country shit for a while. You guys have had y'all's, and y'all been doing it forever too. And I feel like we're going to see more people, like more brands in the industry. Whether it's a natural progression that that looks like fun, I want to do it, or that looks like they're making a lot of money doing it, I want to do it. That's going to happen. And so you know, well, one one thing he's always said, Lance has always said to me is if you love what you're doing, it's passion, it, it'll turn into money. Don't yeah. search for the money, let it turn into it because yeah. you'll always have fun. And, and we've had a ton of comments on the channel inspiration wise, like mm-hmm. we're getting out and riding because of that drop. Yeah. You know, it's just people haven't had that push. Mm-hmm. Um, well, e- even, so it's interesting. Even like just the brand thrashing, like you know, with you being someone that, that also has a, I guess a, a passion for photography, Yep. It's like you've been able to also bridge that gap and create your own marketing with your own shit because that's the way you want to be perceived. You yeah. know what I mean? Instead of, you know, instead of hiring, you know, Josh to come in and, and use his idea or some shit like that. Right. You know yeah. what I mean? No, for sure. At the beginning, when I started the company seven years ago, uh, I didn't have the finance, like the finances to hire somebody every week and shoot. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and so I just went out and bought a camera myself. Mm-hmm. And I mean, I started with like GoPros and stuff, but yeah. then like, I bought a, a camera myself and I just watched YouTube, learned how to fucking shoot a moving fan inside my house and what yeah. the shutter speed did and, and when, you know, you want this fan to kind of look like it's moving or kind of stop and yeah. then what it did to the lighting. Um, and this was just all at my house, just like late at night, you know? Yeah. And yeah. then I would get out on the road and think like, oh, it's sick if the aperture is at like one two on the road and it, like get home and like all the photos would look like shit and i was like yeah. what the hell so definitely self-taught um and like would aspire you know like at the time like kirpius was yeah. doing stuff where he was like hanging off his bike shooting photos and i see his instagram and i'm like man i could do that yeah you know and then kind of just like learned about like long exposures and like seeing the wheels move when you're riding so the photo looks like it has life yeah um and then just, you know, slowly getting better at it. And now, honestly, if I don't have a camera in my hand and I'm on my bike, I kind of get bored. Yeah, yeah, like, makes sense. Or I'll, like, see a, a rad, like, image in my head as a bike goes by, and I'm like, fuck, where, why isn't my camera on my neck yeah. right now? But after, like, five days straight and 2,500 miles, my neck will be burnt wearing the yeah, camera wearing the, camera <laughs> the whole time. Yeah. But it's true what you say, because, like, we'll do these trips, and we'll go do a five, 800-mile day, and it goes so fast. And I was thinking... It's maybe because we're filming a lot and, and so busy while we're doing it. Yeah, yeah. We're having fun, but we're working it. But it know? almost like it almost for for me like makes me take in everything I saw more because I'm looking at everything more in depth right. rather yeah. than just trying to cross 200 miles and get there. Yeah, and kind of get like bored and you're just like, oh fuck, when's the next exit? You well, know. Sometimes like I, I get the same thing, man. Where I'm, I'm like riding. And, uh, you know, I'm, I'm in the left of the lane and my buddies maybe just staggered just in front of me. And, you know, I, I'm, and I see them through my arm and the sun's coming through the trees on the other side. And you're like, yo, that's a that's a movie right there. You yeah. know, and and you kind of get this idea or this vision and you start seeing those shots and you see the leading line of the highway going down the road. And I, I mean, I've had a hard time. Me and me and Josh talk about this a lot, but I've just had a hard time like wanting to just do video because the photography such a a deep pat like a deep hole of uh things you can do 100 yeah. percent. and then the photo like almost is like m- i feel like sometimes it's more artistic and more timeless yeah. because it's left up sure. to interpretation as opposed to a video that's always like you know you get every you get your you know your whole story in one one shot cool. not that the video is important and good but the photos like i said yeah, they just kind of I mean, you can look around they you speak can see you know how, I mean? well so basically when we ride and we all do it we're all creating and we're all finding creations as we ride to capture them. Yeah. You know. But even oftentimes we'll have the same Yeah. Look at that. Look, you know, it's yeah. it's interesting when you ride together so much 
like you just almost think about the same thing at yeah. the same time. It's crazy. Yeah, that's definitely. It's it. like each rider is, is responsible for creating or getting shots of each individual. You know what I mean? So well, it's like yeah. nobody well, Max, fucking gets photos of me. Yeah, yeah. dude, I'm saying, <laughs> I do. Josh I got like your more, side shots, same boat. side well, saddle. The same thing all. though. The, the thrashing brand was created with really, and I've said this before, all of your photography. Yeah. And your Instagram, you created that. He created this image with his art of photography. Mm -hmm. I. I personally don't think that. I do. I don't think that it was was as much Instagram. I, I personally still think, and I still think it's growing off of word of mouth. Oh, for sure. So, but like, I think, like, like realistically, if I deleted the Instagram today, we would still grow. Yeah. Well, I would say that you guys kind of started at the, not the beginning of the Dyna FXR craze, because I know that shit was happening here before it was swept across the country, but you were established early enough here that when it did move across the country it uh you looked like a, a solid brand i mean my first dyna ever built I, I ran your pipe nice and i remember buying it on amazon yeah <laughs> hell yeah <laughs> uh, no it was but, one of those deals but i mean it's one leg of the stool it right one leg exactly of the stool, you know? there's definitely. more to it than just that but there it is yeah because no, the right shots about, that you right get and the, the action that you're showing and the vibe that you're showing is you yeah. know, one of the things I have a hard time with, and you guys could probably both attest to this, is like I do enjoy capturing the content, whether it's GoPros or, or the or the, the photos, because it's so amazing when you're riding that you do want to share that experience. It's it's kind of unexplainable in a way. Like you know what I mean? Like hundred percent, yeah. All the homies behind you, you pull in a gas station, you're yep. looking for the bar or, or restaurant to to close the night out at this town. It's like there's so many vibes that you get on motorcycles and it's all kind of hard to capture and really show you know what i mean yeah but i mean nothing better than a hard like uh, earned drink at the end of a 400 or 500 mile day yeah. <laughs> I and mean, we got a comment just about that recently yeah. was you know i love that you guys share the road share this and that but show us what the town's like show that drink after 500 miles yeah and all that because people want to see it and for us i mean shooting it's awesome sharing it's awesome other people can watch it, but we can always go, fuck, I kind of missed that Texas trip. Go watch it ourselves. Yeah, yeah. And right. You can always look back at it, you know. Well, Just but speaking of drinking and 500 miles and stuff, the four of you guys all are drinking alcohol, and I think you guys barely rode 10 miles today. <laughs> I didn't ride today. <laughs> I didn't ride today. <laughs> I drove. <laughs> How far you ride today? Uh, what is it? 30 like, miles? Santa no, Cruz. Like, Santa Cruz is like 22, 22 or something like that. Okay. But... I've been riding a lot lately. <laughs> yeah, I know, I know. I did saw you roll in the parking lot, and I said to my buddy, I was like, I think you rode from, like, Texas or something. Well, he did 1,100 did. mile one day. So, yeah, the first day I left, it was 1,100. And where I'm at in Dallas, we just have this thing. It's like if you put a – like in, like the map that you guys got in the office, if you put a pin in a string that's 1,000 miles away and just did a circle around it, we can pretty much rip that in a day, and then we're finally in cool shit. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah, yeah. thousand miles we're in Sturgis, thousand miles we're in Smokies, thousand miles we're in Phoenix, and you know, it's uh, it's just something I'm used to. You know, coming out here a lot, uh, just get that first day out of the way. That's when you got the most excitement and energy, and you can kind of do it. You know, the mm -hmm. next day you might just make it a short like 150, 200 mile day or something like that. But you know, I don't know. I'm. <laughs> How do you like your 131? Oh, it's awesome, man. Uh, that motor is. Uh, I didn't want to talk too much about it because I'm on. I'm almost at the furthest point of my trip, and I want to do all my shit talking when I know I'm going to make it home. You know what I mean? <laughs> but everybody had so many negative things to say about that motor, and you know, like I said, I picked it up in Milwaukee, and then from Milwaukee, I rode straight to New York, and then home, and then Florida, and home, and now here, and it's like. No issue. No, no issue. I bought a Harley 120, and the thing turded on me within 400 miles. And then fixed, and then turded again at yeah. six or 800 Which miles. Which one was it, though? The 120 Street. Twin cam, right? Twin cam. Oh, twin cam. Man, you yeah, know, like, it, there was a point in time when these inmates were coming out, and I, I, know, I know, like, five people personally that bought the bike, and it blew up on the way home. And it, 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 it's just one of those things. They probably had a bad run of parts. Or a bad, you know, a whole bunch of people that didn't want to do their job right or something like that, you know, assembling the motors. But was that 17 when it first came out? It, I don't think it was a 17. It might have been. 18s but I, were the first baggers, I think. 
17. Well, 17, 17. 17. 17. Dinas still had twin cams. 17 baggers had uh, – Gotcha. Yeah. And then 18 had the soft tail came out. They had, they had a few issues the first year and a half. Yeah. Well, the oil, the oil uh, something shit. Or, I don't yeah. know. I'm not a mechanic. <laughs> I just ride them and paint them. So you ran into some snow, too, in Julian. Yeah, dude, that was wild. Um, yeah, everybody's like, hey, you got to go to Julian. And then I think uh, Speed Kings is doing a ride there next week. You guys just are about to drop a video, right, yep. on that? So Wednesday. I was like, it's on the way. And I wanted to go to Glamis to shoot some photos as the sun was coming up. So that was just a, a funner ride than going back down to the 8 and then going across right. to San Diego. So. But it's also one of those rides that once you commit to it, you can't You're necessarily in. turn around and go another direction without losing the entire day. And as I got higher up, the snow got higher off the ground. You know yeah. what I mean? So it was sketchy, but it's one of those things that, like, I, I was thinking about on the, on the ass end of the mountain or the west side of the mountain. Like, after I'd done it, I was like, I'd do it again as I'm freezing my balls <laughs> off and my feet are soaking wet. That's a, every, you know, any, that. any trip that's, like, a crazy experience, yeah. right? Like, you, like... Like, why the fuck am I doing this? And then you get home, and you're like, that was so much fucking yeah. fun. <laughs> exactly, man. You rode in the snow when you did the uh, adventure bikes. Yeah, it was snowing that morning. Yeah, mm-hmm. We woke up in Utah, and it was snowing in uh, Caneville, Utah. And and they and the, the weather said that it was going to snow, like, all day into the next day, which, like, we were only supposed to be in Caneville for – two days and so they started tripping that it would, if it snowed too much like we wouldn't be able to ride mm-hmm. so when we woke up they were just like yeah let's get riding as fast as we can mm-hmm. and then yeah by midday it stopped snowing but yeah in the morning it was snowing for sure um but yeah i mean we weren't touring we were just going you know creating content yeah dirt <laughs> so how, how was that whole experience man like with the I mean, you're one of the you're the only person I know that's ridden the bike that isn't like corporate. You know what yeah. I mean? Yeah. No, I mean they said they told us that we were the first people that wasn't part of like the the um, engineering team to ride. Yeah. It. Um, like you some were of doing the, that right when y'all came out, right? When y'all came out to Texas is when he was yeah, riding. Yeah. He was, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so Back some like some of the action shots you'd seen from like a year ago that was like part of their like corporate engineering team that like was maybe riding at their Arizona facility. Mm-hmm. Um, and yeah, when we got there, you know, they threw us in, uh, in their gear, obviously. Um, and basically said, have at it, you know, and they kind of explained the bike and there's four different settings. There was, what was it? There was like, uh, just like the basic setting of like, you know, the tuning and, mm-hmm. um, and then there was off-road, then there was um, like highway, and then there was rain. Yeah, mm. that's what it was. So was it um, off for traction type Yeah, things? it's off for yeah. traction. Yeah. I never rode it in not the off-road mode. Like yeah. that's the highest power. It'll cut loose the most. Um, it had all of like the most aggressive feeling. Yeah. And I, I never felt that I didn't want that. Mm. right like i always put it in that i always turn the track control off i always wrote it yeah but you hard. ripped them you flew them you yeah there there was one time where we had to me and my buddy had to race up a dirt a dirt like fire road yeah and um i forgot to turn my track control off yeah like at the bottom of the hill once you're going you can't turn it off if turned off in neutral yeah and when you would come out of the corner i mean it would not let the back end come out from under you at all. I don't I mean, know how that does that. I've never experienced that my whole life on a dirt bike with like it's weird knobby tires, like where your back end won't come out from under you. Mm-hmm. And um, and it definitely made it super safe for like the average person that, mm-hmm. you know, like maybe I'd like it. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Like that maybe isn't used to getting like cutting loose <laughs> yeah, at yeah. all. Um, and, and I couldn't keep up with my buddy as much who did keep his mm. traction control off because he was able to spin out of the corner and the bike never Back was off. cutting out and yeah. it just like took off. So, I mean, it's definitely a way aggressive bike if you turn off all of the electronic stuff, which isn't like a cheat code. Like you can yeah. do it. You just have to do it when you're in neutral. So did you feel like it's it had a lot of uh, technology into it for a Harley? Like, like, like usable shit, you know what I'm saying? I mean, they had like the there, there was two models well there's two different models there's like the special i think it's called and mm-hmm. then like the regular and the regular comes with normal suspension mm-hmm. but like high performance suspension like moto suspension yeah. it's not like traditional harley stuff um and then the special came with like adaptive suspension so 
when you would get like five miles an hour, it would drop an inch. Mm. And then when you would like go over five miles an hour, it would raise you up that inch, which mm. was really cool. I mean, I'm five foot eight. So like when I would come to a stop or even going slow and stuff where I'm kind of like dabbing my feet, um, yeah, the bike was way easier to handle and you That's were cool. like right there. You weren't like on your tippy toes at all. Or even yeah. then you were like super flat footed. Um, so there's that technology. There's obviously all those different, you know, ECM setting technologies, mm -hmm. um, traction control technology. Um, and so at the end of the day, it's definitely, you know, more modern. Um, How but, close did it feel like a dirt bike, if you will? I mean, I was jumping it so gnarly and, and we were doing like berm shots so gnarly that even some of the jumps, the photographers that they had like photographers that I'd worked with for the last 20 years. They had like moto guys on yeah. the shoot. Um, and, and even the photographers were like, all right, all right, we got the shot. Like, don't like, don't do it anymore. Cause they were worried that like, I was going to send it too hard. <laughs> um, they were worried that like, they didn't want me to get hurt or they didn't want to break the bike too gnarly or anything like that. So they would usually shut me down, but I was able to push the bike further than they had expected. That's cool. Um, you know, granted, it wasn't my bike, so like I was not scared to push it, right? Mm -hmm. I didn't just go spend twenty thousand dollars on it, and I was yeah, like, yeah. oh, like I gotta be super careful, you know. Um, but I think, you know, obviously anybody that's buying the bike to go out and jump a motorcycle mm -hmm. probably should just go get a dirt bike, right? Yeah. But like, if you are out <clears throat> touring and you do want to get on a fire road and you do want to ride some little bit more technical stuff, and then there is kind of like some. I'm not saying you want to session a jump, but you you know there's some fire road little things where you're gonna maybe pop up and get some yeah. air. Like super fun bike. I mean anyone. I mean you know how a, a normal Harley does yeah. a burnout when you wheelie. Mm -hmm. Like this bike will do a wheelie like a sport bike. You know and nice. it revs out to like I forget the number, but it's you know ten grand or something. Like when you want to, you can wheelie like a sport bike, where you can just like go yeah. down the street like shifting gears and it can shift with no clutch basically like. It's not clanking like a Harley. You it know? sounds like a sports bike too, right? Yeah. Well, I mean, it's had it has a huge muffler under it, a huge cat. This is the side muffler coming out the side. So, I mean, I'm sure it sounds mean if you put a straight pipe on I'm, it or just I'm, a muffler. You know, I really wonder if it's going to take because the price point's a lot better than we thought it was going to be. Yeah. I wonder if it's going to take to some of the you know some of the kids that might be wanting to get off the diner, the soft tail into the bagger. I feel like. I feel like it might be the one thing that maybe some of the aftermarket uh, companies in our scene might look into doing some stuff to that bike. It could. I mean, a lot of those kind of segments of people are already on adventure bikes, whether it be a KTM, anything like that. I mean, it could be possible. I, I like you're saying, like what you just said about like the KTM and stuff. I think that the Harley world of aftermarket would better get ready for the dirt bike world aftermarket going after it right like yeah. you're gonna see you know possibly fmf and pro circuit and pro circuit and acropovic and pro taper handlebars and renthal handlebars and um you know ims foot pegs and renthal sprockets and so you're gonna go you're gonna have brands that are very big into dakar and and Supercross and Motocross coming into that world, yeah, making parts for Harleys, and so I think that the um, that the Harley world not being as competitive, yeah, you know, will um, will have a lot of that coming in. So I actually don't know how many Harley brands will cross over into the Harley Davidson Adventure world. I, I mean, I feel like it's one of those things that it just needs to it just needs the influence, right? You mm -hmm. see certain people start owning it and throwing some flavor to it if you will mm -hmm. then uh, i think it's going to be a more appealing bike to a lot of people because I, I mean like i've always had this theory of myself that like i've evolved with motorcycles to just chasing fun on motorcycles right mm -hmm. so i started in sport bikes it evolved to big wheel baggers actually <laughs> uh, and then into like the the more fxr dyna performance bagger thing that we do now it's just been like, oh, I'm kind of bored of this bike and what I'm doing on it. Like, that looks fun. I want to try that. And I think that maybe, just maybe, it might be a lot of dudes have been 
you know doing the Dyna thing for a while and now this is like that that kind of looks like it'd be yeah. a fun thing to do i do think that like it will get that crossover of people that have yeah. been riding harleys like you're saying and like they never really saw themselves buying an adventure bike but then they're like oh harley came out with one and it will bring those harley riders yeah. over for sure um but i see like as like the parts world it's almost like like king shocks that makes shock trucks trucks for shocks maybe on the ford raptor but you don't necessarily see king shocks on the ford gt yeah, yeah. you see race shocks on the ford gt for you sure. know so like just because you make something for a brand doesn't mean that it necessarily crosses over so we're you don't think we're gonna see like t-bars on this thing like good like 10 inch t-bars i hope not but <laughs> what you said is definitely true i mean there's there might not be people from the adventure world coming from other brands of adventure bikes mm -hmm. but there's going to be people from harley world coming to the adventure style of riding yeah you know so that there's more people coming to that scene you maybe know, not the it, brand it's funny you say that because i it's funny you say that because i think that i think that harley riders um and adventure riders and sport bike riders they have this like weird you can only ride one thing like tribalism yeah, yeah it's so freaking weird like i'm not that way i have every brand manufacturer bike i'll ride any bike there's a reason to ride a bike right like yeah. i'm gonna ride a harley to sturgis because it's comfortable it's it's got you know it, it has tradition there's certain reasons why i like to and then and then if i were to go to the racetrack i'm mm -hmm. gonna probably hop on a race bike yeah right and so um and i would love to have a ducati in my garage and a sport bike in my garage a different sport bike and a naked bike and a and a dual sport and every different bike um so i, I think that this maybe will open eyes to harley guys mm -hmm. that there's touring and adventuring on off-road bikes that's just as fun and those riders are just as like-minded yeah like we all just like to ride and hang out with our friends and possibly ride to a restaurant or possibly ride to an area to overlook or possibly get further away from our house for the fun of it mm -hmm. and so i think that um i think it'll just hopefully i think bring more groups of riders together and to appreciate each yeah. other. And that's what I, I mean, the lens that I view it more from is getting yeah. into that market where there's a group of people out there riding. And so yeah. when you have, supposedly the millennials aren't buying bikes. So where are you going to go next? If, if you don't have a younger segment buying, where are you yeah. going to go next? You got to find another market. Well, it's crazy because I'm a fucking millennial. Yes. And, uh, I when feel you, like I've bought you born? F uh, 82. What's a millennial? What years are those? 81 like to, to 96. Or 96. So 96. you're a Oh, shit. Yep. Oh, shit. <laughs> Which is so maybe the, maybe the study is wrong. Maybe it's a Z generation. I don't well, know. I, those, millennial I, just sounds like more derogatory, so I think that's why they use that word more. It could be. <laughs> but the truth is, like, I bought, I mean, I, I grew up in motorcycles in my adulthood, and and I've, I've bought three brand new Harleys in the last 10 years. Yep. So... I mean, how much more am I supposed to buy to, you know, help, you know, flatten the curve, if you will? <laughs> but you're not a yeah. gamer. I am a gamer. Oh, you are. Yeah, dude, I fucking love video games. That's We've my had vice. Several people ask us on our, our channels. Uh, they want to see us on the adventure bikes on one of our trips and vlogs. Yeah, I mean, th it adds a new element. I mean, I, I think that there's a time. It's going to be a time when I definitely want that bike. I wouldn't mind having one, but. You know, like there's so much more concreted roads that I want to experience just in what I can ride to right now, even if it is Mexico or Canada and stuff, that eventually it's going to come a point where I'm like, all right, I've done Maine five times. Like I need I, I need to find another another avenue to enjoy this bike. And that I, that's kind of going back to what I said earlier about like once I feel like I've filled the void of this experience – then I look for a new way or a new bike to kind of show me a different experience. Well, there's a scene, a video of uh, you and Riley on the street mm -hmm. ripping on the asphalt in a canyon oh, on the yeah, adventure yeah, bike. Yeah. yeah. Hauling butt, man. And it was like, that thing looks gnarly. It's actually it. ass. It's hauling, hauling ass. ass. Yeah. It, it, You're not on YouTube. I mean, I would imagine. <laughs> I, I think we always rode it with like the dual, dual sport tires where it was like super knobby. Uh huh. Um, but. I mean, overall, the bike leans further than any current 
you know, so if they put that, model. if they put that back or that, put that's some the panniers. bagger racing league bike. Yeah. Like put some you panniers put, on it. And yeah. just goes, it would yeah. probably beat it. I mean, yeah. at the end of the day, like it has better suspension. It had Brembo brakes on it already, like radial mount mm-hmm. Brembo brakes. It has way more horsepower. Yeah. Um, it has tunable horsepower. It has an engine that's probably way more non-destructive, like way more up to date with, yeah. you know, um, overhead cams well, and stuff like that. So I was I was actually uh, on another podcast uh, before you know this one. Obviously, um, I was telling us like if they were to end up evolving that motor into a bagger platform, I would be open minded to it. Yeah. So there a lot was of, hmm? no, there was something I saw. It was more of a rumor at the time. Is where they were going to try and convert the Sportster platform to use the Revolution motor. Yeah, to kind of try and compete with like the FTR 1200 from Indian because mm-hmm. those are water cooled 1200s, where a stock say Sportster 1200 maybe makes what is it 47, 52 horsepower because mm-hmm. they only rev to five six k, mm-hmm. versus you get this water cooled 1200 comparable to something in a sport or adventure bike that makes yeah. 150. Yeah. So if you put that in a Sportster size platform, you're automatically <clears throat> I think, get yeah. ahead, well, I've know. seen a lot of videos lately in the last week of guys saying they're talking about this bike, and all of them are saying, we don't really know anyone that's ridden one, or I haven't ridden one, but yeah. I'll tell you what I know. And I'm just sitting here going, well, he's ridden them. That's that dumbass YouTube shit we were talking about earlier where everybody has to do – they're doing a review – on like they never wrote something they don't photo. know but <laughs> lance, lance has actually yeah. wrote it in the hardcore conditions yeah. yeah i mean i've written it in all conditions dirt uh like very off-roady up mountains up mountains to where i forgot to turn the traction control off and i got yeah. stuck <laughs> um you know on road um and and then fire road stuff uh, freezing cold i mean i've ridden it one of the days they had us ride it from location to location and we probably put a hundred miles on them. How does naturally just cruising it down the road? How, is it a comfortable stance? Like, like. Yeah, I mean, pl- I, I mean, again, I grew up racing yeah. dirt bikes, so like for me, sitting on the bike, it's not like a sport bike. You yeah, know, yeah. like your feet are more right under you rather than they're not Behind back you. at all. Um, so they're right under you. The bar setup was nice. The the windshield is adjustable up down. So like when you were on the dirt, you might roll it all the way down, and then yeah. like when you're on the highway, you roll all the way up i don't know it probably moved four inches or something but that four inches changed whether the wind was hitting your head or over your over head you. yeah um and so again like with how smooth the engine was and how fast the engine was and the the this the suspension on it and the brakes on it i mean the thing cruised it's you a know? solid bike for the price point that's what i'm i'm I yeah. feel like, you know. I mean, but I won't be able to wear my leather fringe jacket when I ride it and pull up to the old <laughs> yeah. Western bar as easily. I wonder if they're going to make, like, live to ride gas caps for that, though. <laughs> yeah. That'd be dope. I, I, don't know. I think that they're trying to get as far away from that as they can. That's possible. Yeah, I think that, like, I think it's just the evolution of, of all this stuff. And like I said, with the brands that you guys are both have now, it's like you're just doing the same traditional thing that we've all done on Harleys, but you got a new flavor to it, and it's – it's more identifiable with like younger generations that maybe didn't have a lineage of bikers. You know what I mean? Like if you didn't grow up in field parties in the eighties with your dad, you know, then you found bikes cause of sons of anarchy. Then maybe you have a different look to bikes that, that appeal to you, you know? Right. So I don't know. It's a weird one. Yeah, it is a weird one. <laughs> Plans. <laughs> yeah. Well, how was the uh, video that Lance in Lance's, um, how did, was that video that you guys did for Harley? You know, riding oh, yeah. and well, Harley know. actually did the video. Did y'all, did, they was had, it scripted for you, or y'all no, really love each other that much? No, they actually <laughs> said to us, "We don't want you guys say what you feel because yeah. we know you'll feel." And the thing that blew my mind is they had a production team out there. They did, it was a full like doing a TV yeah. deal, you know. Um, but they would ask us a question or just say, "Hey, tell us how you feel about what you just did," you know. And, yeah. and we would just go off and talk. And I've, I've seen people on set, and I've seen how they all work, and they're doing their thing. And it started getting funny because everyone that was working, and there was probably like 30 people there, 25 people, they were actually stopping what they were doing and actually listening to our story. <laughs> and they came up to us after and said, I was listening to your story, or I love it, you know. Yeah. It was kind of a cool vibe. It yeah, was, I thought the video was dope. It was cool. I mean, I've done a lot of stuff for Harley. Like, even Galen was sending me videos of me on Harley TV. I've been doing Harley riding stuff, uh, riding, like, their sportsters and commercials for almost eight years now. Mm, I didn't know that. Yeah. Um, 
in fact like juan who's right over there him and i met in miami doing a sportster shoot for harley davidson mm. um that was like what was that four years ago 2017 yeah that's four years ago four right? years ago yeah. yeah um so i've kind of always done that and you know the uh hurry up and wait type of thing and like hey sit there and do this pass a bunch of times uh so it was cool they didn't call me they called my my father you know and they yeah. wanted his his story they'd been kind of following the two lane life videos and they wanted his story and then um they ended up wanting kind of like a father and son thing but it was super cool to be able to do that with my dad and then be able to have that that video and and all that content that you know again i have a son named lance as well and he's yeah. one and and so like just so we can show him that when he's five and then yeah. 10 and then 15 and then maybe do something with the three of us at one some yeah, point you know? Be dope. you know the cool thing is is every single morning he sends me a picture from his house of uh the little guy watching galen and i on two lane life he watches <laughs> yeah. it every single morning well i think he gets psyched out because you guys do the talking while you guys have the pov so he loves pov shots of riding whether uh -huh. it's dirt bikes or harley riding or whatever and then being that he hears your guys' voices, voices that he's like familiar he's with, yeah. right? Like, so he's just like in awe staring at the screen and, <laughs> Number and one fan. seeing yeah. the POV. Yeah, I mean, we just have it on repeat. You need to get him to like, comment, subscribe. <laughs> yeah, right? So oh, tell him about that uh, bike seat you got. Which one? Why oh. do you think he likes POV so much? Oh yeah, so I got this bike seat where he has to hold the handlebars on the mountain bike. Oh, okay. And it's just a little like rubber seat that's like floating in between the bars and the and the um and, and my seat, but yeah. it doesn't have a back. There's no seat belts to it. So he's holding, holding on, on. Yeah. And um and we go ride the mountain bike trails and like we'll even do drop offs that I'm sure many <laughs> young adults wouldn't even do by themselves so he's uh, doing it with his one-year-old yeah so he's he's father of the year over here yeah watch out for the haters yeah i'll show you a photo i'll pull one up <laughs> i know that they won't understand on the podcast but you could check it out yeah we got, but we, i mean think think about the story of this right yeah we're sitting in thrashing right now mm -hmm. you've seen lance's dad lance's grandfather yeah you've seen little lance there's there's three Lances and one George here. You met his mother. Yeah. You Does George Laura. feel left out with the Lance gang? Well, it's, he's not. He doesn't feel left <laughs> out started. because the, the youngest little Lance over there, his name is Lance George. Oh, okay. So he's kind of pumped go. with that. You met Laura, yeah. Lance's yeah. wife and Lance's mom. Mm -hmm. Met Courtney, Lance's wife. So this family affair, so there's four generations here today. Yeah. And then to watch them go out and ride together, you know, it started because he was helping him th through his motocross <laughs> career. I, I saw little Lance ride up at a place called Lemon Grove when he was five. Yeah, right. I call him little Lance because he's still my yeah. son. But, yep. <laughs> but you know, and to watch this evolve, and then Lance has been riding Harleys for the last 12 yeah, years. Yeah, 12, yeah. yeah. You know, and, and then we become, we were friends for 30, we've been friends for 30 years, but we really rode and have been riding together the last five to seven years. Yeah. It's just this whole dynamic that's it's, been going on. It's, it's just crazy. It's special. It is special. <laughs> special. Isn't that special? Yeah. Yeah. Well, like I said, it's all you know. I mean, for a lot of us, especially the the Midwest and the South, where you know we're kind of removed from this uh, mecca of motorcycles. You know what I mean? It's always cool to see the you know just. I mean, I mean, your dad's SoCal is kind of like setting the standard or setting the. Uh, what would you call it? Like it just kind of brings the the uh, fucking losing the word here. Just shit's happening here, I guess. Like, you yeah. know what I mean? <laughs> it's not that it doesn't happen everywhere else. I mean, we we definitely do our part in in Texas, and there's many other people doing things. But it's just like your weather's good, your riding is down the street. You know what yeah. I mean? Like, well, and we kind of pride ourselves on hitting the bad weather. Yeah, to yeah. show that. We're not just fair weather riders. Well, I was gonna ride over here in the rain earlier, but I just bought these shoes. No, I don't blame you on that. Because my last ones got soaked going through uh, Julian, so I went to the van store, picked up some new ones, shipped the, the water soaked ones back. Yeah. The rest of my clothes in that box are gonna smell like ass, yeah. by the way. <laughs> but but California's got. I mean, you've got all different from yeah, north to yeah. south, and then you've got the all year riding. Dude, I I was in the desert. Yeah. In the dunes, and then I got rained on on the way to the snow. And then I was hanging out at the ocean at the end right. of the day. Right. You know? Yeah. You saw it all. Didn't you do a tour once where you did the I didn't. Surf? Carrie did it. 
I, I, you I didn't were do part it, of it, I thought. Uh, they met me to ride moto. Yeah. But yeah, they did like surfed in the morning, motoed midday, and snowboarded in the evening. Right. That's wild. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Crazy. But I mean, like I said, it's a, it's a very packed uh, motorcycle thing. There's, there's even different vibes. Like as you, like as, this is the first time I've been in San Diego and Temecula on the bike. Yeah. And even the vibe there, it's like it's cool, but it feels different than the vibe here. You know what I mean? <laughs> Definitely. And is. then the NorCal vibe is different than all this shit as well. Right. You know what I'm saying? So. I mean, I understand what you're saying too, but then I feel like when I would go to like uh, Connecticut to go hang out with the East Coast and guys, yeah, I feel like over there they have a lot more like kind of love for each other, and like dudes would roll up on like any bike, and everyone like showed respect. No one clowned. Yeah, I feel like here there's a lot of clowning. Like, hundred percent. And and I'm not part of that. Like I don't. I'm not yeah. cool with that. You know. Like I don't understand why. Like when some dude rolls up not on a Harley, like like people like kind of like beat them down dude my so it's kind of they were still on harley's though but like big will cody comes to the camp out with the big wheel rips with us and one of my best friends my other buddy james that was supposed to come ride with us too that time y'all were there he was he came to the bike night on a v-rod right and we fucked with him forever until he bought the new sport glide when it came out but he even rode the v-rod with us all over all over texas until he got the new bike yeah it when i think when you have a smaller community of bikers yeah or bikes you kind of gotta, you, you kind of gotta stick together more in yeah. a sense because there's not as, you can't just like fuck you guys. I'm gonna go to hang out with. Oh, there's no other people to hang yeah, out. Yeah, that with. makes sense. <laughs> yeah, you know. <clears throat> but, but he um, said like there's a lot of haters. I mean, dude, here, yeah. yeah, dude. I mean, I hate to say this on the podcast, but every other shop I go to, the they, they hate each other. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah I haven't seen no hate out of here. No, well, not yet. Yeah, I, I, I'll see you on the next podcast. And, oh, Thrashing <laughs> was talking mad shit about you know. <laughs> no, nah, ain't, ain't no talk one talking shit, shit about here. Thrash and they talk shit about us. Yeah, but, yeah. But it's also a different feel out here. I mean, yeah. Speaking I, from growing up in a smaller community where it was more neighborhood and art people were out on in the summers on their front lawns with yeah. lawn chairs and having a good time and. To come to California, and no one wants to see each other. They go hide in their backyard. It's just a different vibe. One of the main things, though, that, that like, I, I try to get people, like, trust me, Oklahoma is not better riding than what you have, but the ride from here to Oklahoma is better than what you're going to do every day on a, on, a, on a quick rip down the street. Right. So we always <clears throat> kind of clown, if you will. We just talk a little friendly shit, if you will, uh, that we would love to see more Californians leave this state and go do some real riding and go cross country and see what the rest of the country looks like because real riding is is everything like you can find beauty in the most like not you know idealistic places when you ride and you guys show that in your channel and and i know that you guys find different routes to go to sturgis every year to make it more entertaining I've been to and sturgis fun. seven times and been a different way every single yeah. time yeah and that's what it's about man not not the same shit like mm -hmm. what are we doing today neptunes let's go and then yeah. it's like I literally won't even I won't even fucking leave to go to Neptune no. now, because I mean having two kids. I, hey, I used to, but having two kids, like I'd rather not leave my house just yeah. to go like waste time riding to Neptune's. Now, granted, if I didn't have a family and whatnot, like maybe I had nothing to do on a Saturday or Sunday, like that's a good time. I'm not yeah. saying it isn't. When I didn't have a family, that's what I did. Yeah. And then now that I have a family, it's like I'm not just gonna go burn a Sunday away from my family as I watch them grow. I'd rather like not ride for two, three weekends and, and then the go disappear for five days. Yeah. And and go see all new shit and like actually like my favorite thing is getting on my bike and, and going further away from my house multiple days in a row. Yeah. Right? So it's like the, you leave and then you you get somewhere to sleep and then you the next day you're going further. Yeah. And the next day you're going further. Even if it's for like two, three days going further and then you turn back around. And you're always kind of like ending up at a new spot, a new hotel. Like you've never been there before. That's always, what was awesome about our Route 66 trip. We went and went and went. And we had a destination. We got there. It was like every state, like yeah. Missouri and Oklahoma. Like we're in Illinois. I mean, we're riding our Harleys in Chicago. You know, it's like, yeah, what? Yeah. It's that was cool. Well, yeah. that's I, I've always tried to do that too is, is try to inspire people to instead of instead of waiting until Sunday to go hit the bar or the, or the restaurant or the, you know, Neptunes. Why not get with your boys on Saturday and just at least go somewhere overnight? Right. You know what I mean? Like Kernville. 
yeah, yeah. like something <laughs> like that that overnight trip i think more people would uh it would change their perspective on motorcycles it would open it up the door a little bit like oh man like this feels cool like i don't feel like i need to cut off my enjoyment yeah. and turn around and go home <clears throat> i'm here for the night so like you earn that beer once yeah. you once you get off the bike and then you just have fun and the next day you well, just that's how you did the thousand mile when we started riding in a bit more heavily a few years ago yeah. it was like hey how we can get 500 miles we know we can do that pretty easily in a day yeah so if we leave at eight we'll pull in at two or whatever three and have a a nice time in the town yeah and then we could see all these different towns that were 500 miles out and get home the next day and we could do that saturday and sunday yep then it grew to friday mm-hmm. then it grew to this channel now we're into these kind of week-long series like let's go seven days let's yeah. go ten days and they're really kind of, we have the idea, mm-hmm. they're really kind of not planned because the change, we might say, let's go to here and spend this, and we don't make it, we go somewhere else, we spend the night somewhere else. Yeah. But we're still going to go to the same point, but it changes all through the- I'm, I'm trying to get to that point where I'm not stuck on my destination, where I'm kind of leaving it loose, mm-hmm. but, you know, it, it, I don't know, it, it gets kind of, sometimes it's the perfect setting to be like, look, I'm going here tonight, I got the hotel booked or the campsite mm-hmm. booked. Especially if you're going on camping, because you you really can't always just assume that there's five campgrounds open right. and they're going to let you camp there. You know right, what I mean? Right. Uh, but you know, on the trips, it's like, like say when I was coming over from from Yuma to Oceanside, like I kind of had multiple ways I could go, and I got to choose it. You know, versus you know, but I still had to go to that end destination. I I got to just uh, adjust the route. But you know, I know what you mean though. Yeah. I mean, for us, I think the more times that we've strayed from plans. Yeah the more times we want to, whether it be meeting someone in a town that tells us to go somewhere or a YouTube fan that tells us to go somewhere else and we end up completely changing the plans. Every time something like that happens, we just have a better time doing it. Yeah. And yeah. then it just kind of continues that way. So, you know. It's hard to, it's hard to like plan like the, those rides though during the day when you're like, okay, I'm going to yeah. ride up here and then we're going to go do, like when we did the Twisted Sisters. Yeah. There was no like straight, it was no, when you're traveling and you got to be in a different spot in the day, it's hard to it's hard to backtrack. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's hard to accept it. It's almost like you got to go down there and spend two whole days just in that area right. before you start making that move back home. Hundred percent. You know, I have a hard time with that shit too. Like I'll pass up roads that you are like the top ten in America just because I'm like, well, then I'm have to like Grand Canyon, perfect example. It's off the beaten path. It's like an hour out of the way when you're crossing forty heading west. You know what I'm saying? So it's like. Man, I don't know if I want an to zip up, up and an zip hour back. back. Yeah. That was um, Galen did that to us on the way to Sturgis this year. Yeah, but you wouldn't have seen Moab. We were we were trying to go to what was it? Uh, Mokey Dugway. Dugway. Mokey Dugway. I mean, these fucking guys, they hyped up Mokey Dugway for six months before we went to Sturgis. I remember six months. Like, it's amazing. You're gonna love it. I mean, the fucking route went to the Mokey Dugway to then keep going. We pass every sign in Moki Dugway, Moki Dugway, Moki Dugway, and I'm just going like, all right, it's got to come up somewhere. I just didn't think half the pack could handle the dirt, <laughs> oh, so right, I kept going, them going up. It's south going somewhere. Into Moab. Galen's up in the front. I'm like, he's taking us there. They know where we're going. I mean, all breakfast we talked about it. Yeah, we're a hundred miles past Moki Dugway. I go, where the fuck's Moki Dugway? He goes, I think I passed it. <laughs> <laughs> but we could have backtracked. We're only forty miles. Forty, past. yeah. Good have backtracked. Only yeah, forty yeah. miles back. We I go spent twenty miles had to decided. be in before dark. Where'd well, y'all stay that night? We we had a rough we had a rough day uh, that so day. Rob's battery was burnt, and then we had to wait for Rob's battery to get get real. Yeah, that was a tough day. And so okay, so imagine, where'd y'all start? And when y'all where'd y'all end up on that day? Oh, wait, wait, wait. We started in Los Angeles. We ended in Sturgis. <laughs> <laughs> that was day one, right? <laughs> yeah, <was> day one. <laughs> Well, we, uh, we, was it we Zion? started in LA and we the first night was Zion National Park. Yeah. Uh, and then our goal was to get up into Colorado, up into Denver, but the freeway was closed on the 70. Yeah, yeah, that so sucks because of the fires. Steamboat yep. Springs. Well, no, that, so we went like Horseshoe we had, Bend. We went. You missed a couple yeah. of things. We did like Zion. Then didn't we do Horseshoe Bend right away, like yes. that day? And then 
And then where did we end up after Horseshoe? That was the San Juan River. We went to San Juan Monument River. Valley. Oh, we did Monument Valley. We and then, that's where San we stayed that's because where, of Rob's bike. Yeah. And then Rob's bike. Yep. Um, Rob, Rob works here at Thrashing. Day, day two. His bike, he had an old battery on it. Yeah, and he didn't like 30 realize. years old. Yeah. 30 years old. <laughs> FXR? No. <laughs> Maybe not 30, but it was, it was like 15 years old. It was from old. like 01 or something. Okay. Which was the year of that dyna. That's when I graduated high school. Yeah. And yeah. so, and his battery was burnt. And then we look at, first of all, we barely had cell phone service. We finally figure out like where the, a battery is. It's like to get a battery is four hours this way or four hours the other way. Yeah. And it wasn't like in the evening. So you couldn't go, yeah. really go get it. Like, even if you left, we luckily, Rob had buddies that were trailing us by those four hours and they were able to stop in that town and get it. But it still put us back probably six hours, Easy. Yeah, I would say. Yeah. So then Galen decided that fuck it, Moki Dugway's yeah, out of the question. Then, let's fucking go. Gotta go straight. <laughs> that was like near Mexican Hat. Yeah, Mexican yeah. Hat. Yep. Yeah. That's that area right there is like special to me. I love me riding too. through that area. Yeah. It's uh, you know, Forrest Gump's one of my favorite movies. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. And I will say, not to like toot my own horn, but I've ridden a Sturgis on a Dyna, a Soft Tail, a Street Glide, a Road Glide. So anybody that says that they can't go there because they got a small bike. They're just being lazy. Yeah, yeah. It's, <laughs> but we don't want guys on small bikes because they can't stop too much. Right well, now. Now maybe not on our team. We made a rule this year. We said you got to have at least a fuel injected bike with six gears. Maybe a five speed that, as long as it can go 150 miles a tank. Yeah. We were having a bike last year that was only going 90 miles a tank. Oh, yeah, I mean, because of speaking group, of Rob, yeah. with this group, we have to get uh, at least 200 miles on a fill up. And the bike has to be able to go at least a hundred. We got to try and break land speed records the whole way. There. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But part of the problem is at ninety miles, and you got to fill up. Everyone takes their helmet off, and all of a sudden, here comes all the white claws. And so it's not like a quick yeah. break. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We have a rule: don't take your helmet off. And one guy takes his helmet off, and you're fucked the rest of this fill up time. Yeah, I, yeah. every yeah. fucking guy. We did eight gas stops a day, and each one took a half hour. <laughs> at least, stupid. at least. It was stupid. I was, I was by the end of the trip when we were riding home. I was yelling at people if they took their helmet off. Yeah, yeah. I was felt like camp. Counselor. I know that feeling, man. I know that feeling. It, it's. Uh, I was just telling them earlier. It's like this trip was easy because I'm, a, I'm solo. So, there was like three Phillips in a row where I literally just pulled in, gassed up, never got the bike. Yeah. Just right back on the highway. Yeah. You know what I mean? And and I was able to keep it going. But what sucks is about those ninety mile. Um, it's not just that they only can do ninety miles. It's that. It puts you in weird spots because you might have to stop 50 yes, miles yes, so right. you can do the next 90 we miles. We were doing right. that. And yeah, we were doing that too. It yeah. sucked. We were even, we had, um, Rob had the escape bags with two MSR fuel bottles on it. Yeah. We were stopping at the 50 mark and then still going, fuck, dude, you're not going to make it on the side of the freeway, filling up with the MSR. He had a carbureted uh, 03 dyno. 03, 100 year But I don't think it was tuned that well, so no. it wasn't well, getting good gas. We had just put a new pipe. And, and it was leaking oil for that, or something like that. And who knows so what it was, it was even tuned like yeah. when he got it. Was it was leaking so. oil as well. Yeah, leaking we, oil, twenty-year-old yeah. battery, not See, tuned. But the greatest stop we had was when we got all. We went down to a Lee's Ferry just outside of Page, and we all Abbey. got in our bathing suits and jumped in the frozen Colorado River. Is yeah. that is, is Page right there on the border of Arizona and Utah yeah. where the lake is? Yep. Yeah, that lake looks badass. There's like a, the big ass bridges that go over yep, it and stuff. Yeah, that's right where Paige is. So on that note of like passing through cool areas and not stopping, the year that we did the first podcast, when I was up here with all the homies, we were doing Born Free. When we left, we went to Vegas, and then we were going to Zion, or I think that's that first town over over the border, and then you kind of cut over and go through St. George. Then yeah, the, yeah. The we Oregon. were going to go through that little mountain pass there. We were like, man, like we're trying to get all the way to Monument Valley next. We were camping there that night. And so we didn't have time to jump up in there and go through all the roads of that, that park. Yeah. And so we had to just skip that shit. But then the, we wanted to do Antelope Canyon, same shit. We couldn't stop and walk down into that thing yeah. and stuff. I don't know. Oh, those parts suck, man. Yeah. <laughs> you can't, like... Well, we're going to do some more this year where we actually spend a night somewhere and do a little fun while we're there yeah. instead of just burning through. It's yeah. like I was telling you earlier. It's like I'm, <clears throat> I, I, I'm literally loaded out my bike. I have all this camera equipment. I want to get really badass shots because this stuff isn't, like shit i can do on the weekend real quick you know i want to get those good beach shots at with the sun going down and you know like i said i was at uh glamis when the sun was coming up to get good shots and it's like it's so hard to plan the day when you need to be at this spot at 6 p.m or at 4 p.m to get the shot or set up everything and you don't really know the lay of the land so you even know what the composition is going to be yet and 
It's been a. It's been a. I haven't quite got the shit I wanded to get out of this trip yet. Yeah. Well, you got an hour extra podcast. now. Huh? Yeah, it's daylight savings time. Yeah, I know. Yesterday, so you know. Yeah. But every year on the way to Sturgis, there's been something. Yeah. And it makes it part of the adventure. But what we found since we've been doing two lane life is now it's like we expect to get somewhere, mm-hmm. and now we get in at dark every time because we end up finding these shots that we want, and we take yeah, a little yeah. longer, and we do a drone, and, or Gilbert does a drone, and <laughs> like we have all these, and it just the, the it ride takes a has while changed. to do the drone stuff. Yeah, uh, it can be pretty, pretty run and gun. Na- like now we have a little system down. We can talk on the Lexans and say, "Hey, you're going too fast. Slow down." So I don't have to wait till they get around, turn around, and say, you were going too fast, I didn't get it. You yeah. Know? So it's quick. Um, it's a lot quicker than you'd think, but it still takes time stopping. If you stop for five minutes, that's eight, ten miles, yeah. eight-ish miles, depending on how fast we're going. So I was at, I was at we, my we shop. We don't stop for five or ten minutes. Yeah. Trust me on that. I was at my uh, shop. Two minutes or 15 minutes? That's probably 20 to 30 minutes ten, easily. Ten. Yeah, yeah. I was at my shop trying to teach myself how to use my drone and ride my bike and capture me. And so I had it, I got it set up to where I can set the actual controller on my gauges on the dash, yep. uh, between the T bars and the gauges. And like I can get it to track me and just, you know, roll like 20 miles an hour so the drone will catch up. And so do you ever have it in front of you as you're going forward or it's always no. to the side or behind I've you? I've been zero success on the all Okay. Because we were trying to do that, like maybe hit a salt <laughs> flat yeah. somewhere where. There's nothing where the drone can run into, run into and nothing yeah. where we can run into. So if I'm if I have the controller, like you said, in between the ferry and the bars and we're all <laughs> going, can it follow us? Yeah. Maybe. You know? That's what I was trying to do, but I couldn't pull it off. That's why uh you know, like everything I was I was telling you about the camera and the flash uh-huh. that I brought, I was trying to know how to get the shots when I get to the spot so that I can yep. do it quick and I tried to do the drone thing a couple of times, riding the bike and get it to track me, and it was just too clunky. Yeah. And for the amount of space it takes up in the camera bag, it just wasn't worth trying to even bring it. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. And then, then you start getting out on PCH, and I'm trying to find a drone or some yeah. shit. I'm like, I don't want to lose this damn thing. On the and there's naval bases and shit like that where you can't. Oh, yeah, yeah. You don't want to have it. I heard you there. like to break the law with drones. <laughs> I do. There's been a uh, – let's see, Spain. It's not him. It's Gilbert. Yeah, Gilbert. Spain, Lebanon – uh certain unnamed areas in the u.s yeah yeah some shit like that he's a highwayman highwaymen are outlaws (laughs) you guys are so bad (laughs) well no man it's been it's actually been really cool just seeing everything go like i said you guys still manage to keep creating content Mm -hmm. coming out with shirts left and right fucking riding i mean every day it seems like for us you know because we don't see you every day but through social media it feels like you you guys are constantly on a trip. You guys are, but then the big group shows up when, you know, you got Dom out there and everybody's coming up and everybody, you know, Fueling's out here fucking with you guys too. And well, uh, not we have two uh, a series of two dropping on Wednesday. So the next two Wednesdays are going to be us in Idlewild with our wives, and then the next drop, in the next few drops are going to be us with the thrashing guys and and. Mm-hmm. Uh, Kern, Kernville Death Valley run with all the guys. It'll be fun. It's always yeah. a good time with yeah. them. Yeah. We, yeah, we love the young we, guns. On the on the last on the Death Valley run, we we woke up in the morning and I told all the boys, um, everybody ride. Anyone who owns FXR, ride your FXR. And uh, I don't know. It's been a while since I you know did a couple hundred mile trip on on the FXR and fuck, we were going down the 14 freeway. It was a windy ass morning. Cold. I mean, how it was. I mean, again, I don't know. Someone listening to this probably like that ain't cold. That ain't windy. Yeah, but, yeah. but it was it was windy. What do you think? Forty mile an hour wind, thirty mile an hour probably winds. Thirty. So thirty mile an hour winds. I got no fairing on my on my FXR. I mean, we. I felt like I was going one hundred thirty miles an hour, but I was going sixty. <laughs> I was like, what the hell? I should just fucking rode my bagger. <laughs> but but when we finally got past the fourteen freeway and like we got into the cool part of Death Valley. And you weren't just hauling ass down a freeway. Yeah, the trip, the trip was so much fun, and the, and the and the canyons were so much fun in Death Valley, and the weather was nice in Death Valley, and um, we were all on our FXRs, and all right, four of us were on our FXRs, which just kind of felt cool, right? Like yeah. Some of these bikes are older than we are. You know? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, I mean, you know, it's not no panhead or anything, but it's definitely it's still an old piece of machinery that you know isn't as trustworthy necessarily as uh, as what a do you guys- bike. You know, I've been. I was riding with some homies out in Temecula, and they took me through some, you know, mountain canyon roads. And I kept up, and I enjoyed the ride. And I like to smash hard when I can. But 
there was points in time because I don't get to ride that shit a lot that I wanted to just cruise it to be able to take it in, you know. But we're fucking yellow lining around cars and shit in the canyons. I'm like, well, I'm not gonna be the little bitch from Texas that can't keep up with the Californians. So I'm trying to prove myself too. But at the same time, I don't know how much I like both of that. You know what I mean? Like being all balls to the wall sometimes or just taking it in. Well, I There's will say a, this: these three guys right here, they. <laughs> Lance can have his camera. Josh can have his camera. Galen can have his camera. <clears throat> and these guys can fly through canyons and still do the camera thing. I put mine down. I'm like, if it's not a helmet, I got to hold on to stay with him. You yeah. know? His bike earlier, he has the fucking thumb. Yeah. It's, he's he's like almost holding on so hard. He's like, put a my grips, when they're the heated, bike. they actually shaped yeah. into my thumb. Oh, really? yeah. <laughs> but that kind of goes back to that conversation earlier. Oh, I don't want to just ride to Neptune. It's like when I yeah. started riding, it was sport bikes, and we'd always do the same ride Neptunes, Encino, all these Malibu canyons, and you get used to them. So you do end up riding them quick and having your fun. But now, after doing some of this stuff with these guys, sometimes I can't even choose. Like, yes, I love ripping canyons. I feel very comfortable doing so on whatever bike I'm on. But, uh, you know, sometimes when, when you're in more of these bigger sweepers and you get this great scene you're in, you get to soak it in. Like, fuck it, slow down, enjoy yeah. it, you know. Or yeah. not, whatever. It, it's a hard one. Well, it, it's not a black or white thing. It's not yeah, this or that. Sure. But, yeah, I was just going to say, that's like, it, it depends, you know, how comfortable you are, right? Mm -hmm. Like, my comfort level, being able to enjoy what I see on the side of the road and everything going on could be a step above, you know, the, True. the, the regular rider's comfort level. But then I've myself ridden with guys that get to the end of the canyon, you know, a minute before me or whatever mm -hmm. it be. And, and I've looked at them like, why do you even ride that fast? Like, yeah. Like, I don't need to be sweating while I'm riding because I'm stressing out <laughs> if I'm going to fly off the side of the road. You know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. But again, like, that's that's <clears throat> where his heart rate is and where he likes being, you know? I, I've I, had I was, four been... years of training, and it's all from these guys, right? You know, <laughs> yeah. I'm fueling guys. If I didn't learn to go fast, I wouldn't have been able to keep up with it. I would just say we all have the best of intentions. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> because what ends up happening is, oh, let's just do 40, home. Let's do 60. Yeah, and all of a sudden it's a canyon, and then it, all, it, it gets racy, and then it's like, Dying. and it's on, and it just. But you know, we've done our share of you know going around cars and canyons, and yeah, you know, there's, a, gets, there's sometimes when like that car yeah. just really just screws it up. Like right. it's not, it's not even a comfortable speed where you feel like actually feel it. You know what I mean? Right. It's, it's almost like all you can do is look at the ass of this car, <clears throat> so you just need to get around it or right. whatever. I don't you know. I was the whole canyon. Yep. Yeah. Like I was following you to Bandera. Mm -hmm. You weren't going very slow. But you well, know I those had, roads. I had to. No, I don't. I just had oh, to prove don't. something yeah. to you guys. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> you know. I got guys in town. <laughs> I couldn't. I, don't be a bitch. Don't on don't this be greasy be road. road like. I mean, that tore our bikes up. Dude, I know. I'm so glad it was y'all's <laughs> and not mine. <laughs> <laughs> well, I always say when we go to Sturgis, it's like we pass everything with rubber from here to South Dakota. Yeah. And I know I can look at every one of these guys' faces, from the fueling guys, the thrashing us, and I go, we walk out of a restaurant, and I'm like, I can tell. I could just stop and record it. It's on. They're going to get on their bikes, and we are going to go fast, you know. <laughs> well, let's put it this way. Me and Cole, this last year on Sturgis, were doing 100-plus the, I don't know, what was he, a highway patrol? Yeah. Like that. yeah. State trooper. State trooper. Pulls us over and and goes looks at my buddy Cole and he goes, you were doing about 110 and your buddy over here was doing about 105. So I'm going to let you off and give it to your buddy. So I fucking got the ticket. Because you didn't. Cause you, <laughs> he said I was because, going less. Because he no, said. I, you were in front. Yeah. He, I, he, he was trying to catch up to you. Yeah, he was catching up to me. So because he was catching me, it's my fault he was speeding. <laughs> the fucking guy gave me it. I have it all on the GoPro. and you your it's, it's in our Sturgis drop. <laughs> it is. It's yeah, on the Harley-Davidson television, by the way. Center. We still yeah. have it. And so basically, it's just I, I love to speed, but that one that I couldn't sure. fight I because I'm from out of state. I don't know how to hire a lawyer. From you the, can't. It, was it in Sturgis? Like, which no, was, that was in Wyoming. Wyoming. Yeah, the way I got they, popped. You paid it cash. Yeah, you have to. Yep. So I got I got popped uh, in Deadwood, you know, because we went out there one year and we went and rode Spearfish Canyon mm -hmm. actually in 2019. Yeah, 19. And we got there a couple of days earlier. That way we could rip it before all the bikes got there. And uh, we 
we did some fucking super illegal shit down that road. And then we get to Deadwood, and uh, I went around a car. And you know how it's like 15 miles an hour? Yep. Yeah. I got pull- I, they, they tried to give me reckless driving for that shit. Well, it gets you for anything else. So yeah. right out but, there, you just threw him like a couple hundred bucks, and he's like, yeah, Well, oh, yeah, I had to show. It, this was like Friday like morning, Mexico. and I had to be there. <laughs> but I didn't had, you pay cash? I Hard. no, my guy. My guy was the option was if you paid cash, you had to have full exact change. You couldn't go a dollar over, a dollar less, and I didn't have exact change. So how is that? Does he put that in an envelope and then he takes it to the bank and deposits it? I have no fucking idea. But my oh. guy, like my guy, was having my guy. That sounds put like it, extortion. Like, put, it, or something. put it this way. Long story short, my guy. I'll let you finish your story too. Yeah. My guy was um, basically he he fucking. Wrote the ticket, put it all the way through, and three months later, my insurance went up. Yeah, yeah. Right. no way it wasn't happening. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It happened to me too. So I got the reckless. They moved it back down to uh, careless, so it wouldn't be as bad. But I had to pay like 150 bucks right there. There, there's like no option to get a lawyer to fight it or anything. You just pretty much got to yeah. take it. And then uh, yeah, same thing went. My driving record's like really bad looking now, and it's just dude some bullshit. My driving record's so bad. I have, you know, I mean, you guys know some of my bikes. Like, I have the, the Road Glide, I have a Dyna, I have an FXR, I have a Panhead, and uh, obviously my vehicle that I drive, you know, and my insurance company's like, um, so, uh, so Lance, so out of your insured vehicles, the, uh, the best one to put you on as like your daily user is your 1971 Honda Trail 70. <laughs> so I am insured as my daily rider on my Honda Trail 70. Wow. That's what don't, they think I ride that. to work every day. Wow. Uh, trail 70. <laughs> yeah. Little does like the person at State Farm know that my Trail 70s could fit in the trunk of a car. <laughs> <laughs> they probably know that. That's insane. Yeah, the, the, I've had like a perfect driving record my whole life. And then I had like one year with a ticket and a, and a rear end somebody. You know what I mean? And it was like, you would think that I've been smashing into people for years the way they, right. they hike my insurance up. Yeah, I don't like, get that. You you drive good for five years straight. They don't give you no discount. Yeah, it's like. But once you have one ticket and you yeah. get pulled over, years later, they say, oh, he's already got a ticket, boom. I got buddies that drive like fucking idiots. Mm-hmm. Never got a ticket though. You get pulled over, be safe out there. Yeah. Nothing, it just. Well, I got out of a, a speeding ticket in the canyons here by a motorcycle cop and he knew thrashing and he's like all right i'm just gonna give you no plate ticket so some of the guys here they do know thrashing a lot of them rock just like the black stealth gloves i got out yeah. a cell phone ticket because he was wearing the motorcycle cop was wearing thrashing gloves and i was like bro you got thrashing gloves on hook me up <laughs> and so i've gotten out of some but and he said i'll hook you up but you need to hook me up now yeah <laughs> yeah i need the red ones uh, yeah, exactly. they'll go with my hook outfit me up and next thing you know he's in cuffs yeah, yeah. <laughs> Now, I've, I've been running those gloves for quite a while. You know, I, I always had a hard time um, wearing gloves because, you know, when you start riding a little more aggressive, you wanted to, you just want to feel the grips more. It's that naked feel. Yeah. yeah, you know, and, like, sometimes, the like, I have a pair of winter gloves that I, I also have on this trip. They're just thicker, so when you have your hand around the, the bars, you just got much more of a grab, and you don't really feel as much of the bar react. I don't know what the word is, but I just don't feel as confident with my hands around that grip as I do when – I wear a thinner glove and the other thing is like with me i'm more of a clean like i if i if i could just dress like bill gates every day i would totally do that shit and still like my wife would still think i'm sexy and shit you know because i just don't your wife wait your wife thinks you're sexy she said it this morning (laughs) she saw me in there you know i just got a shower belly hanging is she with you on this trip she flew into yesterday and she's hanging out with her friends and she's from santa Clarita up there oh really yeah so, so we she's a back. native. Yeah, yeah. Nice. I actually met her in Florida and then moved her to Texas. And then we just come back here and, you know, hang out oh, and shit. Cool. She, so, how old is she? Uh, 32. Oh, <laughs> shit. She's like. Yeah. Yeah. She probably knows people that I know. Yeah. I mean, she went to like Saugus High School, all that shit up there. Yeah. So good times. Nice. Uh, I don't know anything about people. I'm I'm old. You know, when I met her, she was 24 and I was 31. So I felt like, nice. yeah, she's, yeah. you date like a younger than that. It gets kind of hard to have a conversation with them. What do you say? You're 31. <laughs> They're doing TikTok dances and shit. And you're like, what the fuck's going on? <laughs> you said 31, 24? Yeah. Yeah. I got a buddy doing that right now. I've been giving him shit for the last two months. I'm like, bro, you're robbing the cradle. <laughs> <laughs> They're supposed to be fully developed at 24. <laughs> it's supposed to be. Maybe not up here. Dude, yeah. no, I, I, 
<laughs> on that note, I was uh, before I met her. I was uh, I was literally dating a chick that just got out of, out of college, and so she was like twenty two. Man, it's so complicated to have a conversation. So when I say dated, it was more of a different situation that we were doing, but it was like just really hard to. You know, just I was like, here, have a beer or something. Like, I'm 24 and I can't do it. You know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's brutal. Yeah, it's hard. But no, like I said, it's it's a uh, I don't know. I guess I've been running the the, the the gloves for a while, and I prefer them personally. And and the the cleanliness of it, like uh, having just all the black gloves like that, and not having like you know, just yeah. all the shit all over shit. it. You know what I mean? Yeah, it's no. kind of hard to. I don't like the feeling of attention in certain things. You know what I'm yeah. saying? So. We just percent. transitioned from twenty-four-year-old women to gloves because we're on gloves first. I'm trying to keep always this, wear gloves. I'm trying to keep this YouTube friendly, bro. Is that a proctologist <laughs> glove or is that a writing glove? I don't know. It seems like you got gloves for everything, man. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, we dig our thrashing gloves, and they work. They do work. Help. Proofs in the pudding. That's a fact. Pudding has to take a call. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, no, that's all good, man. So. You guys got to go live here in a minute. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I don't want to take up too yeah. much more of your time. You got family stuff at 4 p.m. Yeah, I got to pick up my kid. Cool. Otherwise, because of this COVID stuff, they shut the schools down early. So I got to make sure I get there. And then if you're not there on time, it's like they'll they're fucking blow a gasket on you. Oh, that's crazy. Yeah. California. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Baby. Not in this little building, but. California. Yeah. Yeah. I'm glad I, I was I, I was going to wear my mask in here just to see if, you know, I'd make you guys feel weird. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> if you wore your mask in here, I definitely would have been like, what the fuck is yeah. he thinking? <laughs> Texas. See, really, I would have been like, like rubber gloves on and a ma- double mask. I would have been no like, no bullshit. I would have been like, does he really think that we're like this over here in California? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no. Yeah. No, I've actually, uh, yeah, it's been, it's been pretty normal. I mean, I mean, I've I've tri- traveled the whole country with the COVID shit, and it's uh, I've had to eat outside in a lot of different states, and you know, so far I've been able to eat in quite a few establishments here, so mm-hmm. it doesn't feel that much different than the rest of the country now. But I know it's probably been shit for the last year. <laughs> you there well, was little nooks that you could find. We've yeah. been I've been eating inside this whole time, and for real? yeah, I mean, you, you know, you get like the owner of the restaurant cell phone number. You going in the back door? Speak easy. Yeah, well, you doing well, some two you lane know. life uh, since. Uh, February has been traveling the United States a lot of it and uh, we haven't stopped yep and yeah. we've you know I feel like not a lot has changed in my life other than certain places you can't go inside and eat but yeah. other than that I've been living well but for us I mean I don't know it was just dumb luck or lucky or what but we were kind of ahead of it in every different area so we traveled for the year. We've been eating inside all year long, yeah. except California. Yeah. Right? Unless you find the spot that the secret you spots. can jump in. Yeah. yeah. Well, cool, guys. Thank you. Thrash and supply on everything. How's it work? Uh, wait, what's that? What do you mean? Like your website, your shit like that. Oh, just thrashandsupply.com, thrash and supply on Instagram. Um, or better yet, go to your local dealer and grab a part through Drag Specialties, and you can feel it. There you go. Huh? Local dealer online. You ready? Yeah. Twolanelife.com. What do you want them to do? Well, with Tulane Life, you got to subscribe, you got to ring the bell, hit the button, all that <laughs> stuff, you know? Right? Links in what the bio. Tulanelife.com. <laughs> Tulanelife.com. All the blogs are there and all that you good gotta stuff. You got to subscribe to the newsletter, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. It's mm-hmm. a lot of work to like these dudes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Shameless plug. <laughs> well, thanks, guys. I appreciate Thank you, it. Jason. Thank you, Jace. Yep. Thanks. All right. Those dudes are the best. I enjoy every time I get to hang out with them. Me, Lance, Big Lance, and uh, Galen, uh, and Josh. We all went out and had some nice, fine Italian dinner that night. Thank you guys for that. And uh, you guys check them all out, man. They're, they're really rad people. And, uh, you know, the Thrashing brand is a solid brand. You know, hanging out there with them while they were doing the podcast. I mean, their entire family. We're talking about generations of people hanging out in this shop. It's the closest thing to like the Nest family I've ever seen. So uh, good to them. Glad to see their their brands growing and uh, all that good shit. You guys need to be checking out this camp out coming up. It's like in a week, in a couple days. You need. You don't want to miss this one because it, it it's going to be unique and different because there's going to be so many people there. I don't I don't even know what to expect. I just know it's going to be rad. We got a lot of cool shit happening. We have. 
I don't even I don't even want to spoil it. It's just gonna be a great time. You guys need to ride your bikes. If you can't ride them, trailer them. If you die, if your bike's not down, not running, jump in the car or the truck and drive up there and party. It's gonna be a good time. You don't want to miss it. K River Campground, Moyers, Oklahoma, April twenty second through the twenty fifth. Uh, we do have T-shirts, and the only way you're gonna get that T-shirt is by showing up. So, you know, you should probably show up. <laughs> We're gonna have the T-shirts there on that Thursday. Uh, we have two hundred shirts made. Um, hopefully, uh, you get your size because we only have X amount of sizes of everything. So it's gonna be a good time. Shirt's really dope. Really stoked about it, and um, really stoked about this camp out. I'm I'm glad to see it grow after the last four years, and um, I, I really thank all of you guys that's been coming out to it for making that happen. So I uh, hope you guys enjoy this podcast. Um, it was really great talking with these guys. These are great friends of mine uh, that that we've been building over the last couple of years together and um yeah that's that's all i'm gonna say about that <laughs> that's all i got to say about that oh man forrest gump quote good one huh anyway we're gonna be back again this week with tony shreds you guys have heard of this dude he's one of the dudes leading up all the harley davidson racing out there on the west coast and uh, he's been on the podcast before if you want to check out the last one we did with him it's about a year ago a li- little over a year ago and uh since then man this dude's been off to the races literally <laughs> so we got that coming, and then next week it's going to be a shit show because of the, the camp out stuff. So a lot of live videos going down next week on our YouTube, and then podcast released the following week. So you guys have a good one, and uh, we'll see you back in a couple of days. Peace.